Hello all, welcome to Gear Up with PEG. I'm Ryan, he's Josh, and this is one of our favorite new toys here at PEG, the DJI Inspire 2. Josh, tell us about it. Well first, uh, we, can't, we couldn't be more excited to uh, upgrade our drone. Kind of getting to see the specs on this and just see how across the board it's been completely redone and improved is very exciting uh, as the pilot. Just to list off a few really key things that they upgraded on this, it runs on dual batteries now, which gives us more flight time. Uh, there's a built-in forward-facing camera for the pilot, so instead of us repositioning in the air using our flight time, uh, I can always have that forward-facing camera to see where I'm going and things like that. Uh, the whole thing is built lighter, so it has a heavier payload, so we can put a much larger camera and lens on it, which is a big deal for us. A nicer camera is always going to produce nicer content. Just across the board, they've completely rehauled the safety design of it. There's new propeller locks, uh, much lower operating temperatures, self-eating batteries. So we're just super excited to, you know, own this and to have such a big upgrade. It's like welcoming a new baby into the family. And let's talk about the cameras. You, you, you mentioned that. And I know that obviously, you know, the drone itself is very pretty, but the, the picture quality at the end is really what matters. So how big of an upgrade is the camera on this compared to the Inspire 1, which is what we had before? Oh, it's a huge upgrade. So uh, the Inspire 1 was actually carrying an X5R, uh, Zenmuse X5R, uh, which at the time was the only raw uh, shooting camera that you could get for the drone. But uh, they've obviously made some huge improvements. This is the Zenmuse X7. So it's uh, basically, again, the same family, just like the Inspire 2 is the same family of drone, same family of camera, but a uh, big key uh, point is that the X7 shoots in 6K which is actually the only 6K shooting camera that PEG owns, which is kind of incredible. Hmm. Um, I think, obviously, that kind of speaks worlds, but the big thing for us is, in post, uh, the X5R, as incredible as it was, it was kind of basically processing power, couldn't keep up with it, and it couldn't produce flat video files right out of camera. It gave us DNG sequences. So for every long shot that we had, we had thousands and thousands of of stills instead of just getting a fully produced video file right off of the camera. Um, so a huge thing about the X7 is that it actually shoots at 6K ProRes RAW. So it's just going to come off in ProRes, which is our favorite editing co codec, in the new format, which is RAW, which is actually still so new that there are some things that don't even accept it yet. So we're really happy to have our foot in the door on that and just to, to be able to take basically RAW files right off of that camera and get right into our post editing workflow as opposed to going through thousands of stills and doing our color correction and bridge and things like that. Now we have this awesome workflow where we can just take it straight off of the X7, put it right into our timeline and just get right into our raw controls and get our color correction done quickly. So well, it's huge. Yeah, and when you talk about 6K, like, I mean, we all know that a video shoot, a photo shoot, whichever you're doing with a drone, like it, it's an investment and you wanna be able to use that footage for a long time. I would imagine 6K, that's gonna future-proof things for a while where anything you shoot with this is gonna be evergreen for a really long time. Oh, absolutely. There's still not, I mean, there's not everyone is even fully producing things in 4K as of now. So to be able to say that you have 6K drone footage of your facility or whatever it is you're, you know, trying to get that aerial footage of is just going to future proof anything, any of those shots, as long as you, you know, you don't change your logo or anything along those lines. But yeah, I mean, there's nothing that's going to outpace 6K in the next five to 10 years right now. So that's incredible. Like I said, it's not even really like the world isn't fully producing things in 4K yet. So, you I mean, there's still this is even a step ahead of that, so that's just incredible. Well, and you, you talk about post, it's gotta make it a lot easier, I would guess, from an editing standpoint ever. Like, that gives you even more and more flexibility to be able to crop in on things and really tailor those shots exactly how you want them, right? Oh, absolutely, especially, you know, if your final product is going to 1920 by 1080, you're able to crop in, uh, I believe it's like eight and a half times uh, your, your frame. So you can take a very small chunk of your 6K frame size and that will still be full resolution in a 1920 by 1080 final product, which is just amazing, especially considering how wide most drone shots are. And then I should also mention something incredible about this is uh, previously we didn't have the options to change lenses on our drone. It was always, uh, I believe, a 16 millimeter wide. And uh, the X7 actually has a full range of lenses that we can upgrade to if we ever decide to. So, I mean, I, I think the wide is probably still the way to go for aerial stuff, but if we were doing a nice tight follow and you needed something like a car shot that you're following tight, but you don't want to be like dangerously close to it, you can swap lenses and have like the option for that as well, or shoot it wide. And like you said, if you're producing for 1920, just crop into that car and just have it look like a very nice tight shot that was actually filmed extremely wide. So a lot of possibilities with 6K footage. Definitely. And I, I know it doesn't necessarily pertain exactly to the Inspire 2, but I feel like anytime you talk about drone, it is important to say too, 
that one of the things that we make sure we do here at PEG, not only making sure we're well versed in how to operate this thing and do it safely, but do it legally as well. Can you talk a little bit about what that process is like and why it is so important to go through the proper permitting and make sure that everything is 100% okay before just going out there and flying this thing? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's kind of the, the thing in drone world right now is there's just, everybody has a drone and they can go and get that footage. But if you try to use footage commercially, uh, that's actually illegal. So you have to have a commercial UAS pilot license to, uh, to be able to sell drone footage and to be able to fly in commercial operations. So that's something that at PEG we definitely jumped in the door pretty early on. Uh, even back when we first got the Inspire 1, uh, a few of us took the test and were certified pilots. I've recently retaken my test, so we're still very up on that. And just knowing the regulations and the airspaces is so important to be safe and to do things the correct way and to not get yourself in trouble. So just having, I think, that knowledge and just knowing like you're in an airport's airspace and you can't just take off and do what you want because that footage is immediately illegal. If you, if you don't have the proper permits, you can't sell that footage, you can't use that footage for advertising purposes. So just knowing all of that and so much more, I mean, that's just kind of the base level of it, is extremely important when trying to get, capture aerial footage of something that you want because you, at the end of the day, you need that footage to be legal and usable and still look good. So I think it's very important that you have the background of legal knowledge. Well, and, and to be clear on too, when you talk about that commercial license, that's also very different than if I just got a drone myself and wanted to go fly it, you know, at the park for fun. I, I need to register that drone and technically get a permit for it as well, but that's a different animal than what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, absolutely. Every drone has to be registered. That, and that's, as the simple reason behind that is, it, you have a registration number that goes on your drone. So just in case you happen to fly it into something and it lands somewhere, that number links back to you. You have to be responsible for, you know, your flight. So you, you have to register the drone and make sure the FAA knows like, hey, this registration number crashed. We need to contact the pilot, find out what went down and everything like that. So yeah, even recreational pilots have to register, but it's different uh, to actually go and get your license and then have a, well, ours is still going to be registered. It's just now also going to have the backing of a, you know, certified pilot as well. Definitely. It's a very, very, very cool piece of gear. You can check it out and other pieces of gear on our website, printerentertainmentgroup.com. Also, Facebook, what, what other platforms, Josh? Uh, you'll see a lot of me on the Instagram, a lot of volleyball pictures, but we also try to keep serious with some gear photos and behind the scenes stuff of our shoots. So definitely check out our Instagram. We're really active on there. Yeah, Twitter as well. That's another great place. We try to keep updates going throughout the day. We also have a great blog, PG Insider, on our website. Post all kinds of stuff on there as well. Some getting to know stuff with the team, but also a lot of really cool industry insight blogs as well that uh, we really hope you check out. So for Josh, I'm Ryan. This has been Gear Up with PEG. Say bye, drone. <laughs>